let's offer up, this is the starboard side garboard and see what we get. We need to come to me about one more inch. That's that index mark that came with the plank. And if you'll just hold that, the best general rule is clamp from the middle to the end. And to check and clamp one station at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp on each of the four timbers because they're handy. And it's not productive to jump to conclusions about the fit till you've kind of got it where you think it's supposed to go and immobilize because if you run to one end and try it out you're liable to come to a conclusion that isn't right because the other end is crazy wrong. But in general it's supposed to fit in these notches in the floors. The two garboards meet on the center line so we don't want to be over the line because we'd be interfering with the other one. And although it's a little faint right there, that's my penciled center line from the other day, so that's pretty good. Might be just a tatty bit fat right through here, so I'll maybe think I might rub that with a block plane in a minute. I can see it right here, so that's good. I seem to be fitting in the nooks in the molds and the floor timbers pretty nicely. I can imagine the center line right there. And again, I'm just, just budging the center line right here. So I'm probably going to want to shave that a little bit, which is easily done. Just going to mark that so I know where I want to go in a minute. I'm going to start assessing the bevels at each mold, um, checking to see how the bevel looks on the keelson and how the bevel looks on the floor. I'll probably peek my head around the other side and see how this plank is laying on the mold. And this one is perfectly acceptable. Um, it's not a cabinet maker's fit, but it's definitely an epoxy fit and it's not warping the plank or anything, so I think I like it. Um, we won't count our chickens till we've checked all the others, but so far so good. I'm going to make sure it's down on the keelson and look inside, and it is really sweet and fair on that edge we were checking for the rolling bevel. Um, I may have over beveled this floor a little bit, but it's dead on the mold, and the keelson seam looks great, so that's where the miracle of thick epoxy will do us well. Checking number four here, I'm a little bit in the air, um, you know, more than meets my fancy here, on the mold, and we'll check and see what the uh, floor looks like. And I'm a little bit up in the air on the floor, except right at the outside edge. And I have a gap along the edge of the keelson on this, um, in this department that we didn't have before. So I think the inside toward the center line on the keelson can take a couple strokes of the plane and that'll bring everything down a little happier. Okay. I'm not quite happy with the fit up front here and my conclusion is I'm not beveled enough from about here to here on the joint, and it happens to be where the hard spot is in the joint between the keelson and the stem. So I know now when I take this off, I'm going to stroke that a few times with some sort of tool. And I also think I want to pair about an eighth of an inch off from there to there. I'm just going to make myself a little depth mark. I'll fare that in with a block plane on the bench. 
that bevel, if anything, is over beveled. So epoxy is our friend. Here to here, a couple strokes will improve things. Make sure you've got the big picture and you record the notes because when you take it off and start carrying it around, you're going to lose track of the corrections you wanted to make. We've made our corrections or tunings and offered this back up and I am much happier with how the plank fits on the bevel of the joint between the keelson and the stem. This line is much fairer. It's fitting much better along the center line between the new bevel and refairing this edge. I'm going to spread our epoxy bead across the full surface of the keelson with a putty knife. And what I'm trying to do is make sure we've got epoxy on the full gluing surface so that it's sealed, as well as when the mojo's good, leaving a fat bead in the middle that as we clamp the thing down, we'll be um, spreading that out. Okay, let's. Mount this garber. Keep it up in the air for me till I get to the sweet spot, please, Dustin. Okay, you can head for your notch. I'm on the station line. One thing we have to watch with epoxy is that um, it lubricates things, so they're very happy to slide around now. So, yeah, hold for me right there. I'm going to clamp from four. That home and I'll clamp five. You could clamp three, please. Yep. As we start clamping and bringing this thing home, you have to be careful the inside edge wants to pop in the air or edge set, and that changes the shape of the lower outer edge of the plank. We can't really clamp this because we're going to put our other garboard on right after this. So we're going to shoot some temporary screws. And I'm going to shoot for every 15 inches or so into the keelson just to hold those down. Dustin, why don't you back that number three off? Because this definitely pops up here. There's that squeeze out we're looking for. If glue's squeezing out of the joint, there must be glue in the joint. Now you can clamp that snug, please. Okay. Just, yeah, just a light band. And let me shoot right here. Yes. And now a little tighter. Yes. And now right home and we'll actually just screw this rather than clamping it. Right home and let's see what we can do right on this tippy tippy tip. tip. Stole it from you. Yeah, shoot that. Just, just no. Good. Done. I'm gonna put a number eight inch and a quarter bronze screw in to permanently clamp the um, plank to the floor 
and it just makes me sleep better if I reinforce this joint. And so the screw head will get puttied over in the prep work before the boat gets painted. And that's as good as a clamp and a lot less in the way. So I'm just, because of the narrowness of this plank, I'm just going to do one per floor. Make sure what I'm doing. You folks will notice these are square drive screws. They're also known as Robertson heads. And I find them my favorite screw for power driving. They're the most positive, least likely to torque out, and you can actually load the gun and reach with it. I'm cleaning up the squeeze out under the boat, and I'm happy to see squeeze out. This might be a little excessive, and I, it's just absolutely imperative to get in here and do this cleanup work right now while it's soft and pliable, because if you leave it till you turn the boat over, you'll be buying dynamite before you know it. This is just squaring out the corners where I trimmed the angle and where that very delicate beveling tool I used can't quite hit. That takes care of our corrections for the starboard garboard. Okay, keep it off the boat please till I say so. Right there and into the notches and down. And we'll clamp from four here. This has been a really good day and a really big day because we have started planking the boat and have garboards on both sides. And that makes me sleep well because the planks fit well, the molds behaved well, everything's going to be good for planking up the next six planks and it's a really good feeling to be at this point in the project.